As the war rages on between Gaza and Israel, the U.S. global spying space system is being used to collect massive amounts of intelligence for the Zionist state of Israel. Despite the Biden administration calling for a pause for the war starting in early November, the U.S. state has been collecting information from the skies the entire time. But how is the global spying system from the heavens being used for the benefit of the Zionist state of Israel? And what are the implications of such uses? Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. Two large geosynchronous signals intelligence satellites hovering above in the skies around our planet and operated out of the U.S. base in Australia, Pine Gap, looked down upon the Gaza-Israeli battlefield, collecting as much information as possible, then handing it over to the Israeli Defense Forces. A former Pine Gap employee recently said, Pine Gap is monitoring the Gaza Strip and the surrounding areas with all of its resources and gathering intelligence assessed to be useful to Israel. All of this has recently been reported by Peter Kronau and published in the Consortium News outlet. This data that is collected by the satellites is analyzed by the U.S. National Security Agency, then handed over to the IDF. A 23-year veteran of the NSA, David Rosenberg, has said that using NSA satellites over Gaza has, quote, the aim to minimize casualties to non-combatants in achieving their objective of destroying Hamas. But this begs the question, if the U.S. has been aiding Israel with collecting information gathered by the spy satellites with the goal of minimizing casualties to non-combatants, then how and why are so many children in Gaza being targeted, bombed, and killed? Why is Israel, who has the aid and support of the most powerful spying system in the world, operated by the US, bombing non-combatants? After all, Hamas is a small section of people in Gaza, which has 1.5 million people who reside in the area, and 650,000 of those people live in just Gaza City alone. As of November 28th, there are an estimated 14,000 people who have been killed, of which 5,000 have been children, with 20,000 injured and many more thousands missing under the rubble. Shocking numbers. The United Nations has stated, Gaza has become a graveyard for children with thousands now killed under Israeli bombardment while more than a million face dire shortages of essentials and a lifetime of trauma ahead. Pine Gap and the U.S. spying system is just as responsible for these deaths as the Zionist state of Israel. The Global Network has published a video in the past outlining the history and operations of Pine Gap, which might be of use to our audience. But to reiterate a few points, 800 personnel work on this base of which about half are American employees, with fewer than 100 Australian government employees. Pine Gap spies not only on military activities of all the countries around the world, but also includes the spying and intelligence collection of civilian and commercial enterprises and communications. Documents leaked by former NSA analyst Edward Snowden showed that Pine Gap contributed to the NSA's global interception and collection of internet and telephone communications with such programs as X Keyscore. Now, during this conflict in Gaza, protesters in Australia gathered near Pine Gap to block a road in support of the Palestinian struggle for liberation to bring light to the connection between Pine Gap and Gaza. It's not just Pine Gap and the NSA, but commercial enterprises are also getting in on the spying world with a new focus on Gaza. Maxar Technologies is a space technology company that specializes in manufacturing communication, earth observations, radar, and on-orbit servicing satellites. And recently, they provided several photos of Gaza from the skies above. 
Even spy tech billionaire Elon Musk is currently negotiating a deal with Israel to use the Starlink satellite services to collect and share information with the IDF. All of this is ultimately tied to the US ruling class's loyalty to the Zionist state. Check out this montage from System Update with Glenn Greenwald. But Biden has really taken the lead. In fact, he has scorned people in his own party, people in any party who even question the idea that the United States should essentially, as he calls it, have no space whatsoever between the American government and the, Israel gov and the Israeli government, or that the United States should give Israel everything it needs. Let's just take a little look, a montage of Joe Biden over the years being extremely consistent, angrily supporting Israel against anyone who would question why we do. Let's take a look. Those of us who support, as most of us do, time, about time, we stop those of us who support, as most of us do, Israel in this body, for apologizing for our support for Israel. There's no apology to be made. None. It is the best $3 billion investment we make. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. The United States would have to go out and invent an Israel. The second part is people should understand by now that should be crystal clear that Israel, Israel is the single greatest strength America has in the Middle East. I always say to my friends when they say those things to you, I say imagine our circumstance in the world were there no Israel. How many battleships would there be? How many troops would be stationed? You know, I used to say, early on when I was a kid, I'd say, when I was a young senator, I'd say, if I were a Jew, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Progress occurs in the Middle East when everyone knows there's simply no space between the United States and Israel. There is no space between the United States and Israel when it comes to Israel's security. There is only one nation, only one nation in the world that has unequivocally, without hesitation, and consistently confronted the efforts to delegitimize Israel. At every point in our administration, at every juncture, we stood up on the legitimacy, on behalf of legitimacy, of the state of Israel. The security of Israel in the United States is inextricably tied. And we will never, ever, ever abandon Israel out of our own self-interest. I also emphasize what I've said throughout this conflict. The United States fully supports Israel's right to defend itself against indiscriminate rocket attacks from Hamas and other Gaza-based terrorist groups that have taken the lives of innocent civilians in Israel. So that is essentially Joe Biden in every decade. That was Joe Biden as a senator. Then Joe Biden, when he was running for president, Joe Biden as President Obama's vice president, speaking to AIPAC, the American-Israel Political Action Committee. Joe Biden as a presidential candidate. Now Joe Biden is president. Same message over and over and over. Israel is not just our ally. It is a country to which we owe undying, unlimited loyalty. For anything that benefits the ruling class's interests, whether it be for the benefits of the Zionist state of Israel against the Palestinians, or for the US ruling class at home in their fight against the working class, the global spying system is made with the purpose of serving those class interests. These spying systems are used against poor and exploited people of the world. It protects nothing but their interests and their interest is to continue to keep a boot on our heads.